Next match was Nyla Rose, The Beast, and Riho. Did you see the South Park episode where they got wing the fucking America's Got Talent or fucking American Idol woman or whatever to do a special guest? They actually talked like, sang like that or whatever. Susan Boyle? No, wing. Wing. It was. It's a South Park episode. This Asian woman. Oh. Look, look it up <clears throat> whenever you get a chance. But anyway, <sighs> fuck. She's a 98 pound Japanese schoolgirl. And she's against a 200 pound self proclaimed Native American beast. As soon as, as Jim Ross had to acknowledge that they had just said that Riho had been a pro for 13 years. Therefore she had turned a professional wrestler at age of nine. When that had to come out of his mouth, this whole thing became hot garbage to me. It is destroying Nyla Rose that she is selling for this fucking Japanese schoolgirl. I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone. Britt Baker is doing color, which she was not suited for and did not have a very good fucking delivery of because she was, fucking flustered and I guess didn't know what to say had no personality whatsoever but she's doing color and Riho is going for the fucking women's title what the and, 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 and even worse here in a second but here's what I did I fucking paused it and went in the fucking kitchen and I made me some New York strawberry cheesecake ice cream with fucking marshmallows and whipped cream on top and came back, and it was still going. So I kept it on pause and fucking waited in a little while longer while I ate my ice cream, and then fast-forwarded it. This went 14 fucking minutes. It went through at least one break. I didn't watch any regular speed, but I could tell by the gist of it that the, R- Riho was bumping Nyla Rose around like she was Chris Colt. And then Riho wins the match and is the women's champion. She is as big as a nine-year-old girl, which apparently I found out something else here in a minute because they bring out Michael Naka 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 the fuck off and get the fuck off my television to interview her. <laughs> <clears throat> and Nyla Rose attacks her, Nakamura. Nakazawa. Nakazawa, Nakamura, the Nakamura Corporation. They're terrorists. Um, it, it, he lo- she lost him on a power bomb, but then got it back. And then is going to fucking attack Riho. And here comes Kenny Olivier to save Riho. Now it made sense. This is the goddamn nine-year-old girl that this fucking twit... <laughs> And he has got a Japanese schoolgirl <laughs> fetish. And there is something going on between Riho and Kenny Omega. A relationship, as they used to say, which is why he has nepotismed her into the women's championship with his buddy, the billionaire, because he's one of the executive vice presidents. How else can you explain? Son of a billionaire. Son of a billionaire. How else can you explain having a 98-pound Japanese schoolgirl on your television, beating your 200-pound monster while your fucking marketable babyface does color, and you've made your fucking legendary, expensive announcer, Jim Ross, tell people on national television that this woman was a professional wrestler when she was nine years old. Everybody's credibility went straight down the porcelain throne in one fucking segment. He's fucking her! He's gotta be! Well, I don't know about it's, that. What the fuck? Oh, what, what the fuck? Or the, why? Why would you do something like that? <laughs> He's nepotismed his way into another one there. The, the wives, the girlfriends, the school friends, the fucking boyfriends, the goddamn cousins, the fucking uncles. I don't know who. The, everybody's going to be related. It's going to be like a fuller family reunion. <laughs> and, you know, and here's the thing. I'm not saying that Nyla Rose has to beat every girl in the world because she's bigger than all of them. The best women's matches that I ever saw that were the monster heel versus, you know, underdog baby face 
<laughs> and some of the best women's matches I ever saw of any kind, period, were Gail Kim and Awesome Kong. And they got it. And it's not that much di difference, you might say, Cornet. Well, here's an Asian baby face girl and a fucking big monster. The difference is Gail Kim, besides the fact she was smoking fucking hot, besides the fact she looked like an athlete, she was in shape. She knew how to fucking work. She didn't do all that. She flew and did exciting baby face shit, but she wasn't a goddamn acrobat. She was still somewhat of a professional wrestler, and she was tough, and she didn't flip and flop Kong around. Kong took judicious bumps, sometimes of her own momentum or making. It made sense. I saw Kong beat the fuck out of Gail. I think she got hard weight at least once, and was, and it added to the sympathy. And she it was she was constantly trying to climb this big monster. It wasn't just a back and forth where they're obviously choreographed and working with each other that this girl is a 200 pound woman is just flying around for this fucking kid. And Gail Kim and Kong did the some of the highest numbers ratings of the TNA Impact on Spike era because Dutch Mantel had him have basically it was wrestling instead of that fucking horse shit that the other guy did. So it's not that I hate women's matches or I hate big girls against little girls. It's that I hated this one because it didn't make any sense and it's fucking stupid. And Gail Kim wasn't involved because did I mention she was smoking fucking hot? Naturally. Didn't even have to wear makeup. Completely different than all the other girls. Should have been one of the biggest female stars in the business. Anyway, <clears throat> so that I'd saved some time, right? So I'm thinking, okay... You know, they, they ran long, right? 2.15. Well, wait a minute. I didn't ask you what you thought of this fucking fiasco. Well, remember when I said the Pac versus Page match took me out of the show? Yes. It literally did. I walked out of the office. I decided to do a couple things in the house, say hello to the Suzanne and the kids and get something to eat. I came back up for the finish and then the Kenny Olivier save, so I missed everything else. I didn't see it. And it's not a shot necessarily on the women's division or on Nyla Rose or Riho. Literally, it was just that last match took me out of it. I left, and I wasn't going to do what you did. I wasn't going to pause anything. I decided I wanted to treat it like the old days where <laughs> it aired live. If I cared yeah. enough, I would sit down. If it made me want to leave the room, I wasn't going to pause or fast forward. I was going to leave the room and see what I came back on. And I came back on the finish. So I didn't see the match. I can't really judge it. Well, there you go. But anyway, Kenny Olivier. Is if, if, if you see Japanese schoolgirls beating... Top quality female wrestlers, it's Kenny Olivier's fault. 